So they say that the medicine can't be worse than the sickness. Well, Apple seems to have just figured out that the medicine is going to be worse than the sickness. They're dropping a major lawsuit against a major spyware maker called NSO, or the NSO Group. Let's talk about it. Today, we're facing an unprecedented array of data breaches, hacking attempts, and surges in digital crime. Why is there such a widespread amount and how little is noticed in our everyday lives? Malware, dark sites, brute forcing, zero days, script kiddies, and nation state hackers are all on the rise. Learn more about the threats we face and gain a bit more knowledge than yesterday. Hey everyone, another episode of Exploit Brokers is coming to you now. So guys, welcome back to another episode of Exploit Brokers. I'm Laudo. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe, the bell notification icon, and the like if you're on YouTube. And if you're on a podcast app like Spotify, please follow and give us a review, whether that's Apple Podcasts or Spotify or some other podcast software. Please give us a follow, give us a review. And with that, let's get into it. So guys, we're covering an article by securityboulevard.com titled Apple seeks to drop its lawsuit against spyware maker NSO. Apple's executives want to withdraw their three-year-old lawsuit against notorious spyware maker NSO Group over fears that the information the device company would have to disclose would benefit the security surveillance software vendor and a growing list of competitors if it was exposed. This is kind of one of those cases where the medicine is most likely or is going to be worse than the sickness, right? In this case, the illness or the sickness is, from Apple's perspective, the security software or the surveillance software vendors, the spyware vendors, right? Because they're taking vulnerabilities, zero days, and flaws in Apple's, and not only Apple's, but in this case, the loss is specifically Apple, but Apple and Android's um, pretty much security issues with their software, think, you know, zero days in the firmware. And the spyware maker use that to install their spyware, which is how they can do a lot of really next level threat stuff. Think surveillance, uh, monitoring, tracking, and stuff like that, right? So in addition, in a seven page filing, they also noted that NSO, an Israeli company that makes the Pegasus spyware, is fighting efforts to disclose data as part of the legal process, the Apple executives noted. So what that's ultimately meaning, right, is it seems like Apple would be required to show their hand. They would have to essentially give more information about how they're doing detection on some of these zero days and thus give the spyware vendors an upper hand. If you know how they're detecting your stuff, that's going to make it easier to be able to bypass that and make your stuff FUD or fully undetectable. But on the opposite side, the spyware vendors are really, really fighting hard to make sure that their data their proprietary processes are not exposed during this lawsuit. So that essentially gives it a one-sided aspect where Apple would have to show their cards, show their hand, but the spyware vendors walk away without having to do much at all. Now, they added they wanted to avoid compromising its commitments to the security of its users, and that given the challenge Apple is facing in the court case, they've decided to prioritize its expert security resources and advanced threat intelligence program to continue to stop destructive spyware through technical methods. Now, all this is essentially them saying, hey, instead of trying to get the court system to put down this major problem, we're gonna rely on our technical in-house expertise. Now, from the outside looking in, you may be wondering, why is it that they're going down the path of, you know, why are they abandoning ship in terms of the lawsuit? And we'll get to that momentarily. Um, it actually gets touched on later in the article. But to be able to understand why they're abandoning ship, we have to kind of understand how the market has shifted. So spyware is marketed as a software tool for law enforcement agencies in their fight against crime. However, it has also been used by governments to secretly keep tabs on and harass a range of citizens, from journalists and activists to rival politicians and civil rights defenders. There have been many countries that have essentially taken the tool and used it in a way that journalists and other people would see as infringing on freedoms, right? You are tracking people who have not necessarily done anything wrong, but who are political opponents or journalists, because if you're not doing something correct or something right, you may not want a journalist snooping around. And that's kind of where they're seeing. So the use of spyware is growing with Google's threat analysis group or TAG and its Mandy and subsidiary saying earlier this year that in 2023, 
75% of known zero-day exploits against Google products and Android-based systems were caused by commercial surveillance vendors. In addition, of 37 zero-day flaws in browsers and mobile devices exploded last year, more than 60 were attributed to such vendors that sell their spyware to governments. What we're seeing here is a shift, and this is even what the article states in, in this next section, but what we're seeing is a shift where before some of the coolest stuff comes out of you know, in the US, three letter, three letter agencies overseas, you have stuff like MI6 and other stuff in the US, think NSA, CIA, where they used to be the top of the line, the super secret spy stuff that used to come out from a software side. Now we're seeing the private sector is really stepping up their game. And why? Because it's profitable. There is a lot of major contracts and a lot of capabilities that if you were to deliver some kind of capability, there is money to be made. Because there's money to be made, several years ago, NSO Group used to be one of the biggest players, but we're kind of seeing that change. And that's what this next section also says. Google said it tracks about 40 such commercial companies. In a report in April, the Atlantic Council, the Atlantic Council took a look at the shady operations within the Spyro market, pointing to the Intellexa Consortium, a complex web of holding companies and vendors for spyware and related services. As an example, adding that focusing on individual players misses the larger picture of how they operate as a whole. And to kind of translate this, if you look at what one individual company does in a space, and this kind of applies to everything, not necessarily only the, you know, the spyware space, but if you look at what one company does, you kind of tend to miss what the whole companies do as a whole in this space. If we think of like retail vendors, for example, one vendor, you know, all retail vendors sell some item. But if you look at the retail vendor that sells shoes versus the one that sells shirts, they're going to have a slightly different approach. They're going to have slightly different priorities, maybe even slightly different marketing strategies. And even within the, let's say, shirt space, you have dress shirts, you have casual shirts, you have super upscale fancy shirts. And the way that those different individual players would sell a shirt differs. So you don't want to hyper focus on one kind of shirt. In this case, I'm using shirt as an analogy for spyware, but you want to look as the market as a whole. Now, if we keep going forward, the market is one in which firms conduct business under multiple names, work with investors across the globe, and where webs of interpersonal relationships underpin a shifting roster of corporate names and titles, the report's author wrote. These factors have hampered policy efforts to extract transparency from this market and limit the sale and use of spyware. The US government has leveled sanctions against various spyware makers, and individuals in European countries also have taken actions. In addition, NSO and its rivals have come under the scrutiny of investigative journalism operations. Just because there is a company that is selling stuff to governments doesn't mean that all governments would appreciate it. In this case, it appears that NSO was selling to certain regimes that not all countries would necessarily find favorable in the way that they're enacting it. I don't want to get into politics with this. I'm merely looking at this from a cybersecurity perspective, but I want to bring in some of that politics because it does kind of matter because we're talking here about government level threats, threat actors. And in this case, the NSO group is selling a certain kind of capability to government agencies. Now, the biggest reason why Apple's pulling it is, and I, and I quote, NSO has been supplanted in part by a growing number of different spyware companies, meaning that threats are no longer concatenated, are no longer concentrated in a single powerful actor, the iPhone maker wrote. The result is that even complete victory in the suit will no longer have the same impact as it would have been in 2021. Instead of eliminating with one judgment a significant portion of the threat environment, other spyro companies unaffiliated with NSO would be unaffected by the suit and be able to continue their destructive tactics. And that's when it kind of comes down to, right? The, the medicine would in theory be worse than the illness. By exposing some of their stuff, because the suit kind of leaned toward Apple having to show their hand, they could potentially take down NSO and where in 2021 that would have been a massive mar that would have been a massive part of the market that's just no longer the case you have so many of these competitors to NSO that even if you take down NSO 
these other competitors would actually benefit because they can take up more portion of the market and they would potentially have some of that leaked information from the court docs that would tell them how they could improve their product to essentially make it harder for companies like Apple to detect them. If Apple can't detect these spywares, they can't figure out what zero days are being exploited and fix it. A lot of the security when it comes to software essentially happens in one of three ways. I'm going to say three ways. There's probably more, but the three ways that I've seen, right? You have either a bug bounty program or some sort of program where you have independent researchers reach out to the company and say, hey, there's this major bug. You should fix it. Then you have threat researchers that figure out what's being exploited in the wild, and they may also reach out to the vendor and say, hey, we found that this is being exploited. You guys should fix it. And then lastly is any internal kind of Q&A, right? As a developer is writing and they notice there's a vulnerability, if, they, if the company has a specific kind of QA team or security team that periodically does audits, and I guess, you know, three and a half would be if a company brings in an external auditing company or hires an auditing company to do what the internal team could have done. Now, having a dedicated team is pricey, and some companies can afford it, some cannot. But here, what it seems like is Apple, I believe, does have an internal security team, but their footprint, right, their digital footprint, which is all the places and all the ways you can attack their infrastructure from iPhone to iCloud to their devices and everything else, um, is significant, right? It's a very big thing versus a company that might only have one or two softwares available. Apple has an entire suite and integrations and other stuff, right? You have authentication with Apple, you have iPhones, iCloud, different variants, different versions of software. Um, and then their software must, you know, support Apple, iPad, etc. But guys, this is kind of what I found interesting. It's, it's something I didn't think I would see because I know Apple wanted to take down NSO for a while because, you know, who wants to have their stuff exploited and for someone else to make money off it? But that's what NSO is doing. And Apple realized that, hey, it's probably better to trust in your own technical team than to go through than to go through the court system, which ultimately would have put them in a worse spot because of the situation that the amount of vendors that are peddling spyware has essentially skyrocketed from several years ago to now. And I don't see that stopping, right? I see the amount of intelligence, uh, I, I say intelligence, but like spyware companies and certain kind of companies growing is going to be a thing because cyber is the new battlefront, if you will. Cyber is the new way where attacks and protection and defenses happen. We are all essentially citizens of cyberspace in one form or another, right? Our banking, our phones, every part of our life is in one way or another connected to the internet. Because of that, it is a very valuable target to hit. Think of the Oasis, if you will, from Ready Player One. It is a super valuable thing that if you can take control of it, there is tons of wealth to have in controlling this asset. Well, the internet is that, right? It's the precursor to what the Oasis would be if we were to live in that reality, because the internet allows that hyper-connectivity. And here, these devices are where people have everything, right? Your phone is now your camera, your phone, your email device, your calendar, your banking, your entertainment. Your phone has become so much that if it was to be compromised by, say, a spyware, they have a pretty much a camera, a big brother on you at all times. But guys, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Louder with Exploit Brokers, and I'll see you in the next one.